Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the most savage moments in MMA. Also, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. With crazy and unique finishes being showcased in a sport that is growing all around the world, savage moments have occurred numerous times. Some fights at fighters show total respect to each other, and some fights are, uh, not quite like that. But anyways, usually when fighters have bad blood, these moments another. Strangely enough, it's sometimes even satisfying to witness if the other fighter deserves it. For this video, we've compiled a list of instances where MMA fighters did savage things during their fights. Number 12, Felice Herrig. Both of these women went straight Nate Diaz. Oh, now a little tough. Oh, oh, it's blood out. Oh, oh, it's getting crazy. The two fought out a close encounter that was interrupted at times by the two strawweights flipping each other off mid-fight. Watch as Casey wipes blood off her nose, throws at a Herrig, and proceeds to give her opponent the double bird. Casey went on to lose the fight via split decision. After the fight, Herrick said there were no hard feelings despite the heated confrontation in the cage. Number 11, Nate Diaz. He's got to look out for that right leg. If Nate Diaz gets that right leg over, he's got it. He Pull locked it down. down. Nate Diaz Nate Diaz Diaz down. Win. For a round and a half, Kurt Pellegrino did exactly what people thought he would do. He uses wrestling to stay on top of Diaz in ground and pound, flowed with Nate's attempts to get out of bad positions, and kept putting the Ultimate Fighter Season 5 winner in trouble. Pellegrino then went for a slam in the second round and found himself tangled in Diaz's legs. Not only did Diaz have the triangle choke locked on, but he also found some time to flex and flip a pair of middle fingers to the sky while his opponent was tapping out. Number 10, Max Holloway. <laughs> He points out your DC. He's even listening to the commentary team. The best box that you see, baby. After landing a clean straight right, Holloway pointed at commentator and UFC legend Daniel Cormier octagon side before slipping a cater counter and screaming that he was the best boxer in the UFC. Holloway then followed up with a crisp jab while evading a flurry of cater strikes before repeating his claim again. The Hawaii native opened proceedings for the UFC with one of the best displays ever seen in the octagon on that Saturday night, beating number 5 ranked Calvin Cater from pillar to post to cement his title credentials after his controversial loss to Alex Volkanovsky prior. Number 9, Conor McGregor. Over the rules, protect yourself at all times, follow my instructions. We're gonna have a clean fight, touch gloves, and let's do this. When referee Herb Dean asked Conor McGregor and Dennis Seaver to touch gloves before the fight, the Dubliner extended his hand, but the German wasn't feeling it. So McGregor flipped the bird before the fight, and then Seaver got his sh rocked a couple minutes later. At the post-fight press conference, the Irishman explained why he made the gesture, saying that it was due to Seaver's use of steroids in the past. It was not just aimed at his direct opponent, though. It was also for another fighter in his weight class, Ricardo Lamas. Number 8, Anderson Silva. Griffin has huge heart, though. Look at Silva. I mean, that's just amazing. Oh, and again, how far is Griffin? Silva juked in jive like Neo from the Matrix in one of the most spectacular performances by a fighter in any combat sport. It was as if Silva had a GPS for Griffin's punches planted in his brain. Silva stood merely inches away, and Griffin, a former light heavyweight contender at the time, only managed to catch air when putting together combinations on the feet. After dropping Griffin a couple of times, Silva ended the former champ's misery quickly in the first round with one last magician act and a deadly accurate jab while moving backwards, and his hands dropped. Immediately after the fight, Griffin got up and jetted back to the locker room, refusing to take part in any of the post-fight ceremonies. Number 7, Habib Nurmagomedov. Both fighters entered the fight with tensions at a high after a strenuous buildup that saw a bus attack at UFC 223 Media Day used as the main driver in promoting the fight. Nurmagomedov, as he had done in previous fights, began talking to McGregor during the fight and requested that they talk now as he rained down punches on the top of the former two-weight world champion. But it didn't end there. Khabib took flight when he jumped out of the cage and attacked McGregor's teammates after this fight and the Russian said at his post-fight press conference that McGregor had crossed lines during the promotion of the fight, a point to which McGregor seemed to reference during the fight by saying it was only business. Number 6, Dominic Reyes. Here's a good rule for fighters, don't talk to your opponent when it leaves you open for an immediate counter, or nod like a douche. 
At the time, undefeated Dominic Reyes tagged Powell with the left hand, and Powell decided to shake his head at his opponent saying no. The problem is, he kept his hands a little too low and was within striking range. Reyes then threw a high kick and slumped Powell. Jordan went to bed immediately face down, and any MMA canvas is anything but a posturepedic mattress. But the savage moment was, Reyes nodding back after he knocked his opponent out cold. Number 5 Jorge Masvidal Any chance they get. The fight clock is brought to you by Modelo. Oh! Oh! As the bell rang to start the fight, Masvidal charged towards Askren and executed the perfect flying knee KO, immediately knocking out his opponent. He then delivered a number of deserved punches to a clearly unconscious Askren before the referee managed to call off the fight. Afterwards, the Cuban-American mocked Askren being knocked out, flopping to the canvas and flailing around, all while his opponent was still lying unconscious next to him. Number 4, Nick Diaz. Ending written all over it. Wow, I just never expected this. I never expected to see him slapped by Diaz. Oh, oh my. And he Lawler was highly touted as the next best thing at welterweight, possessing devastating KO power and ruthless aggression. But Diaz shocked the world when he started egging on and taunting Lawler in the octagon, with the jiu-jitsu black belt urging the latter to stand and trade. Diaz won the fight via second round KO, and aside from being freaked out by Lawler before the fight, admits that he used his trash shock to spook his opponents out, or specifically Robbie. You can't hate on it if it worked. Number 3 Hamza Chimaev First by Lee. Oh nice job by Chimaev Oh my goodness He's talking to David Oh my goodness Within 3 minutes and 16 seconds of the first round, Chimaev had ended the fight like he has ended all of his MMA matches to date in a conclusive, brutal fashion. Chimaev made it a point to yell at Dana White during the fight. He picked up Li Jingliang and brought him over to White and slammed him down in front of him before he choked him out. The move brought a lot of attention to Chimaev and helped reinforce his dominance inside the cage. The welterweight contender looked like he never missed a beat. Number 2 Cody Garbrandt is there anything more demoralizing than your opponent dancing while knocking you out? Probably not. I mean, he stopped Takeya Mitsugaki in the first round, his rematch fight, swarmed him, look at this. The two went back and forth exchanging shots and words throughout the fight, but Garbrandt went the extra mile in his attempt to mock and toy with Cruz throughout the fight. He took the extra moments in between action to show off his dance moves to his opponent before knocking him down numerous times. Garbrandt had a few opportunities to finish off Cruz during the match, but his showboating ended up getting the best of him at the moment. However, Garbrandt got the last lap and accomplished exactly what he wanted as he became the new UFC Bantamweight champion of the world. Number 1 Pyotr Jan if your opponent's Russian, just don't talk trash during the fight to him. Just, just don't do it. Not necessarily talking trash, but Uriah Faber took the initiative to show his tongue to Jan and would get two punches in the face in return. As Faber had fallen back against the cage, Jan had his arms out calling him out. This has to be one of the most savage moments because of how easy he made it look right after. The fight would not end there, but it was still pretty dominant till the Russian would end the bout with a front kick to Faber's butt chin. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the most disrespectful knockouts in MMA. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. We all love good sportsmanship. Seeing two fighters show respect towards one another before, during, and after a bloody cage fight is heartwarming and refreshing in an MMA climate dominated by trash talk, egos, and marketability. However, not every fighter behaves like this. What is more disrespectful than a knockout? A knockout and post-fight taunting. For this video, we've compiled a list of instances where MMA fighters knock their opponents out in disrespectful fashion. Number 8 Gerald Harris After leaving the promotion and picking up wins on the regional scene, Harris met Aaron Cobb in the main event of Legacy FC 63 in 2016. Oh, that's a oh, what followed was one of the greatest slam KOs in recent memory and one of the coldest walk-offs. 
Less than a minute into the fight, Harris picked Cobb off his feet and held him for a moment while Cobb looked puzzled before slamming him into the canvas for an immediate knockout. Harris then flipped Cobb an aggressive peace sign while he recovered consciousness and walked away to celebrate with his corner. Number 7 Rampage Jackson Rampage Jackson and Vanderlei Silva legitimately hated each other, and the disrespect between the two of these men boiled over into the cage each and every time they fought. The tension in the air was palpable as the two fighters took the cage. Good The pair then traded punches until Jackson caught Silva with an incredible left hook early in the first round, knocking Silva out cold. Jackson eventually broke off and let loose his signature wolf howl. Jackson's performance was criticized by the media afterward, claiming Jackson lacked sportsmanship and should have stopped punching when he knew Silva was out. Number 6 Sean O'Malley Sugar Sean got back in the octagon against former top prospect Thomas Almeida at UFC 260. After knocking Almeida down with a shot, O'Malley knew he had finished him. Officially 80. That front kick up the middle. Oh, that, that man hurt him bad. He's doing it again. And again, the hesitation. Oh! He stalked forward as Almeida rolled onto his back, fell into a right hand with all of his weight straight into Almeida's temple. Trying to trademark his own post-fight celebration, O'Malley celebrated by imitating a basketball jump shot and wobbling around as if he was unconscious too. The knockout itself was nasty, and the celebration in tandem made this an incredibly disrespectful finish. Number 5 Michael Page For Page is incredibly talented and often shows the levels to the game, when he blatantly disrespects his opponent's skills through dance moves and mental trickery. His performance against Jeremy Holloway at Bellator 153 showed that he is a finisher not only on with his incredible stand-up, but from all positions when the opportunity arises. Page dropped the clearly outclassed Holloway with the first strike, then took advantage of Holloway's takedown attempt to secure painful toehold submission. While locking up the foot, Page nodded aggressively towards Holloway, and when the fight was stopped, Page got in Holloway's face and danced away to the center of the cage. Page's post-fight celebrations are as infamous as his finishes, but this one felt particularly painful and disrespectful. Number 4 BJ Penn One example of this is his UFC 84 lightweight title defense against Sean Shirk. Oh! The fight played out for three rounds, when Penn landed an uppercut and followed up with a flying knee, Shrek crumpled to the fence while Penn landed several more punches before referee Mario Yamasaki stepped in. After his victories, Penn was infamous for licking his opponent's blood off his gloves. After finishing Shirk with a flying knee and follow-up strikes, Penn realized his gloves were blood-free. This was unacceptable, so Penn walked over to Shirk, who was still recovering from the knockout, and wiped his gloves on Shirk's bloodied face. He returned to the center of the cage and licked the blood to the enormous of applause of fans. Number 3 Israel Adesanya The fight was sure to sell and both men had something to prove, however nobody especially Dana White expected Costa to be so slow and timid. Near the end of round 2, Adesanya hit Costa upside the temple with the left hook which stunned him and caused a knockdown. Adesanya swarmed Costa with punches and elbows before the fight was stopped. Adesanya proceeded to hump Costa while he was killed over, causing the referee to push him away. The humping made social media buzz. I just approve 100%. Number 2 DJ Dillashaw After building a heated rivalry through gym drama and season of The Ultimate Fighter, bantamweight champion Cody Garbrandt was set to make his first title defense against top enemy TJ Dillashaw at UFC 213 in the summer of 2017. Oh! He's there! Dillashaw trying to finish this fight! That's it! Whoa! TJ Dillashaw! The momentum certainly seemed in the champion's favor until Dillashaw got into his rhythm and knocked Garbrandt out in the second round. After the finish, 
Dillashaw's emotions rose and he screamed in Garbrandt's face as the former champion rose to his feet, still wobbling after the knockout. Watching the fight, you could feel the disrespect coming to a boiling point and exploding with Dillashaw's victory and subsequent celebration in the face of his rival. And on to one of the most disrespectful knockouts ever seen. Number 1 Jorge Masvidal Perhaps the most iconic and most disrespectful MMA knockout belongs to Jorge Masvidal when he finished Ben Askren with a flying knee in 5 seconds at UFC 239. Any chance they get. The fight clock is brought to you by Mojo. Masvidal lined up a running knee perfectly with Ben Askren's skull as he did for a takedown. Askren went stiff as a board and fell to the floor while Masvidal followed up with two disgusting right hands before Jason Herzog stopped the fight. This not only set the record for the fastest knockout in UFC history, but it became one of the most disrespectful post-fight celebrations in recent memory as well. And for honorable mention, we have Shinya Aoki vs Mizuto Hirota. While this wasn't a knockout, but it was a submission, it was disrespectful nonetheless. Aoki While it doesn't show the best sportsmanship, it does show that bad blood and heated rivalries can create some spectacular performances. And that right there concludes this video. Let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the deadliest knockouts that turn fighters into stone. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. Some knockouts turn fighters into a confused mess, other knockouts turn fighters into jello, but how often do we usually see a knockout that turned a fighter as stiff as a board? Mixed martial arts is an ever growing sport, so it's no surprise that MMA is still completely full of surprises. Most of the time, a fighter will go limp after suffering a devastating blow that renders them unconscious. That being said, a knockout strike can leave some unfortunate recipients stiff and seized up on rare occasions. It's either that or some weird walk-off knockouts where the fighter is still somewhat in control of their body till it starts shutting down. For this video, we have compiled a list of instances where MMA and Muay Thai fighters were able to knock their opponents out turning them straight into stone. Number 11 Dan Hornbuckle Hornbuckle's kick was one of the MMA knockouts of the year, a kick that Hornbuckle set up perfectly by grabbing Gono's right foot, planting his own left foot and then driving his right shin into Gono's chin. Gono felt like a chopped down tree, with his neck landing on the rope and his head hitting the canvas. This knockout turned him into a straight rock. Number 10 Solomon Rogers This may not be at the same level as the UFC, but it is just as remarkable as any head kick you'll ever see. Is that a bit of desperation with the oh! Oh my God! Samuel Elnicki finished Solomon Rogers on a golden ticket fight promotions card. The kick was so strong, not only did Rogers go straight to sleep, his body froze as he collapsed head first onto the canvas. Not only did Il Nicky knock Rogers out, but it also looked like he knocked out his tooth. Number 9 Nay Quarry The vicious KO was the result of a Rich Franklin punch that upon impact with a canvas left Quarry with many injuries. This knockout literally had Quarry stiff arming the air. First of five scheduled rounds reaching the midway point. Again, on oh, the bike, out! Left and down goes out. Quarry! Cold. Franklin wasted no time and went after Quarry early and often. Quarry landed non-effective strikes as Franklin continued to set the pace. About halfway through round one, Franklin landed a strike that dropped Quarry to the ground. The knockout came at 2 minutes and 34 seconds in the first round. Number 8 Jonathan to his opponent. In November 2014, the world witnessed a jaw-dropping knockout which was both awe-inspiring and chilling all at once. Such was the shocking force of this kick, which was landed in a Muay Thai match in Newcastle, Australia. Yeah. 
The force was so strong, it looked like Tohu's opponent looked into Medusa's eyes, with the kick looking like it was straight out of Tekken. It was Papua New Guinea native Jonathan Tohu's spinning 360 degree tornado kick, which connected clean on his opponent's head, removed his consciousness, and sent him crashing to the canvas like timber. Number 7 Shawn Michaels in an amateur MMA bout, Shawn Michaels broke Joe Maponda's heart and stopped the show with a single punch. How your hands are, how your feet are, and oh my God, Aaron, fight is over. Yeah, had his hands down. Michaels uncorked a pinpoint right hook that dropped Maponda to the canvas, where he proceeded to take a quick nap. Michaels left Joe on the floor as stiff as a board after the knockout had landed. Pops for Sean not needing to land any more unnecessary punches as soon as Joe had hit the deck. Number 6 Vichyslav Pitson On a Saturday night back in December of 2019, Bantamweight Vichyslav Pitson took on Godzik Kurbanelaev at Modern Pankration Federation 232 in Vladivostok, Russia. Pitson landed a ferocious right hand that knocked Kurbanelaev stiff on his feet. Pitson would follow up with one more right hand that pinned Kurbanalaev's almost lifeless body into the fence when the referee stepped in to mercifully stop the fight. The knockout was the first stoppage win of Pitson and improved his record at 3-0 since turning pro a little less than a year ago. Number 5 Gustavo Lopez Gustavo Lopez flashed a smile as he tried to figure out the taller ranger Joey Roquette in the opening round of their highly anticipated rematch. But it didn't take that long. The Bantamweight champion unleashed a right hook from hell to knock out Rouquette out on his feet, the challenger falling slowly to the canvas in a frightening manner just 1 minute and 45 seconds into the bout. Lopez retained his title with the vicious first round KO in the main event, number 4 Marlon Moraes. Bantamweight fighter Marlon Moraes committed one of the UFC's knockouts of the year at fight night 123 after landing a ridiculous head kick on Aljamain Sterling. Mariah's knee connected with Sterling's chin 67 seconds into the first round of the fight and the latter consequently hit the ground in a hurry. As soon as the kick was delivered, Mariah's knew the fight was over. A former World Series of Fighting champion Mariah's put his name on the map with a knockout. Sterling on the other hand was finished for the first time in his career. Number 3 Mazwandele Halongwa The KO which had gone viral on YouTube over the last couple of years displayed a devastating spinning back fist in the opening exchanges of round 1. This one just hurts to watch. His brother. Yeah, both oh, oh fantastic God. spinning back oh elbow. My God. What a and somehow Halongwa managed to sneak in a few punches before Madsen dropped. The video has since taken the world by storm, but at that moment, Halongwa said part of the celebration was also taken over by genuine concern after Madsen fell unconscious to the canvas at the Grand Arena. Number 2 Joaquin Buckley Arguably one of the best head kicks of all time, Buckley beat Impa Kasanganai with a spinning back kick that helped him go viral and may very well be one of the greatest knockouts in MMA history. They are so even on total strikes at the moment. Oh! This turned him into a stone statue, falling on his way to the canvas. Kasanganai thought he had the upper hand by catching Buckley's foot to block a kick attempt, but New Mensa countered with a spinning back kick that caught his opponent square in the face to score the knockout win. Number 1 Edson Barbosa Barbosa became the first fighter in UFC history to score a knockout via wheel kick when he defeated Terry Edom at UFC 142 in 2012. It really poses the question, what do you want to do? Do you right. want to take a chance and risk getting knocked out? Oh my god! Oh! This kick turned Terry Edom into the Statue of Liberty when his heel caught him right on the cheek. But for real though, this man caught a kick with his face and ended up paying for it by his body slowly falling over. What's even crazier about this knockout is that his body held that position for quite a while. And that right there concludes this video. Let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next.
I focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the scariest MMA knockouts ever seen. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. The most feared and fabled method for getting the win is the Holy of Combat Sports Holies, the knockout. For this video, we have compiled the list of instances where MMA fighters knock their opponents out with some of the most terrifying strikes ever seen in the octagon. Number 12, Edson Barbosa. This kick is one of the more iconic kicks ever seen in MMA, and the effect itself is noteworthy. It really poses the question, what do you want to do? Do you right. want to take a chance and risk getting knocked out? Oh my god! Oh! What? Yep, Edson Barbosa pretty much turned his opponent Terry Edom into a frozen being just like Han Solo after his spinning wheel kick would land flush on the face of the British fighter. What's even better is Joe Rogan's commentary as the kick is landing. This insane finish came in the third round when the Brazilian spun lightning fast and instantly turned his opponent into a statue. Number 11, Gary Goodridge. You have never seen a knockout like this in your life. I guarantee it. Delay. And Herrera's a very good grappler here. Oh. Oh my, elbows in number by Goodridge. And that Goodridge formed a human crucifix across Herrera's shoulders. The first shot rocked Hera, the second put him to sleep. The remaining six punctuated the ferocious debut of Big Daddy. This move could have easily been classified as murder, since after like the second elbow, you can see that Paul had already lost consciousness and the fight should have been stopped. Number 10, Dan Henderson. After watching this first degree manslaughter take place, the real question was how Michael Bisping was ever able to walk again. Henderson obliterated Bisping's face with an atomic right hand, dropping Bisping cold, but Hendo wanted to make sure Bisping wasn't getting back up, so he soared through the air like Habib Nurmagomedov and delivered one final blow to the unconscious Brit before the ref dragged him off. It was the first time he'd ever been finished or knocked out, and it was a loss that hounded him throughout his career until he finally got his revenge seven years later. Number 9, Altenbeck Mamashov. Altenbeck Mamashaw was an MMA fighter who was dubbed gold against Brazilian wrestler Elias Silvero at the ACA 30 event in Russia. Silvero, goodness me. Now he's picking it up, huge shots. Mamashaw with the oh, finish! God. Wow! Wow! The right hand knocks the mouthpiece! Taking advantage of the opportunity, Mamashaw launched a huge right hook that hit the middle of Silvero's jaw, blowing out the Brazilian's mouth guard. Of course, after this heavy blow like a sledgehammer, the Brazilian wrestler was knocked out. But you can never forget the power of this strike and how close it was to knocking the Brazilian's head off. Number 8, Uriah Hall. Let's go, I'm inside. Circle. More, couple Circle. more. More out. Ah! Ah! This knockout left Hall's opponent completely floored and unconscious, but when he finally woke up, he definitely didn't sound alright. Hall took on Adam Sella in their preliminary fight during the filming of Season 17 of The Ultimate Fighter, but his spinning hook kick finish wasn't one for the squeamish. The Jamaican American even apologized to the incapacitated Sella, who thankfully got up after treatment and avoided serious injury. This was one of those instances in the UFC where most of the people were wondering if this fighter had died. Number 7, Jorge Masvidal. I mean, this one should be able to speak for itself. Yeah. The fight clock is brought to you by Mojo. Oh! The Cuban-American MMA fighter produced a stunning flying knee strike that absolutely destroyed Askren in 5 seconds in the welterweight contest. Askren was left helpless as Gamebred followed up with two necessary punches to the face before referee Jason Herzog left on top of the down fighter and ended the fight. Number 6, Matt Riddle. The after effects of the strike was probably scarier than the knockout itself, but here, check it out. Okay. Uh, the WWE superstar started the second round early by delivering a ferocious right hook on Simler, which immediately dropped his opponent. Then Riddle pounced on Simler and followed up with three brutal hammer fists to the face before referee Herb Dean pulled him away. Simler could be heard mumbling and moaning on the octagon mat as the clip was spliced with reactions from those in attendance. Dana White looked on in complete shock at Simler, who had broken his jaw in two places after medical examination revealed the extent of the damage caused. 
Number 5 Michael Page If you haven't seen this knockout already, we warn you that the footage is violent. This knockout has to be one of the scariest ever recorded. Just about everything you need in a fight, you lose off the liver shot. It can come back. runs into the jump knee and it's over. Michael Page's KO of Evangelista Santos not only ended the fight, but the brute force of his knee strike crushed Santos' skull into pieces, requiring immediate surgery and forcing the Brazilian veteran into retirement. I mean, just close your eyes and listen to the sound of the knee. Number 4 Matt Brown You aren't prepared for what Matt Brown did to Diego Sanchez on fight night. He's gonna look for that elbow! He's out! Referee steps in, Matt the Immortal Brown! Brown caught Sanchez's kick in the first round, walked him back against the cage, had the time to frame his elbow, and then obliterated Sanchez. The way his body flung to the floor after this powerhouse elbow just showcased how much power Matt Brown had. Number 3 Yuri Prochaska. Reyes still firing back. Toughness shown on each side. The pair traded with tremendous force for more than 9 minutes, Prochaska outlanded Reyes 78-68 in total strikes, and the knockout blow will undeniably be among the contenders for the 2021 KO of the year. He landed a beautiful spinning elbow that left Reyes face first on the mat unconscious and earned him a shot at the 205 pound title. Number 2 Gabriel Gonzaga Gabriel Gonzaga scored one of the biggest upsets when he knocked out Mirko Krokop with a head kick at UFC 70 in Manchester, and it was pretty terrifying. Ribs, man. Mirko looks tentative, though. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, my god. The two heavyweights headlined the fight card, and it ended in dramatic fashion. It was one of the bigger upsets seen in the UFC, and just as shocking because it happened to one of the most feared kickers ever to step foot inside the cage. This insane finish would occur in the first round and would land right on the head of the Croatian, causing him to crumble to the canvas. Number 1 Francis Ngannou What do you get when you cross the hardest hitter in the history of the UFC and an open chin? Maynard's phone to try to get a matchup with Ngannou! Oh! Down goes the ream! Francis Ngannou! UFC 218 was Ngannou's chance to prove his worth, and he did just that after a thunderous left uppercut in the first round. The Cameroonian French Wrecking Ball had already made a name for himself as the most terrifying fighter in the division, but this brutal KO on Alistair Overeem had well and truly made him a challenger for the title. I mean, it speaks volumes when Francis Ngannou's striking power is equivalent to that of a Prius going 40 miles an hour. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, please let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the scariest MMA knockouts ever seen part 2. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. There is no doubt that when a sport allows individuals to launch knees, kicks, or punches to the head, that some of those athletes are going to be put in some serious danger. For this video, we have compiled a list of instances where MMA fighters were knocked out in such a scary fashion that it freaked out all the viewers in attendance. Number 12, Valentina Shevchenko. This one was truly scary. Bag with a baseball bat. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, oh heck, it's it. Valentina Shevchenko's finish of Jessica I at UFC 238 immediately went down as one of the most devastating in UFC history. Shevchenko caught her opponent off guard with a perfect head kick that connected with both the shin to the face and foot to the temple, sending I falling backwards and hitting her head off the canvas completely out cold. Thankfully, after a few minutes, I did wake up, sporting a lump on her temple, and was able to make her own way backstage, sobbing uncontrollably. Even the commentators were worried for I's health, but thank god it wasn't worse. Number 11, Derek Lewis. Of course, Derek Lewis is on this list. 
Blades made his first takedown attempt in the second round, but Lewis was able to remain upright. Sensing that Blades would look to get the fight to the mat, Lewis met his opponent's takedown try with a perfectly timed uppercut that landed with a sickening thud. Blades collapsed to the canvas and Lewis followed him, throwing a pair of insanely brutal hammer fists to put an end to the night. Number 10 Gary Goodridge The sound of these punches and Goodridge's screaming make it even more terrifying. The UFC veteran punished Rana Vardy with punches, while the latter attempted leg locks and triangle chokes to no avail. At one point, Goodrich shouted at Amir to hit him back. Though Rana Vardy threw some strikes from the bottom, Goodrich landed a barrage of punches and knocked him out. The punches that landed on the unconscious fighter sounded pretty insane. There's only a handful of things that can hype up a fighter this much. Will, courage, and cocaine. Number 9 Rich Franklin Scheduled rounds reaching the midway point. Again, on oh, the big left and down goes Quarry! Franklin looked to be taking control, but it was still anyone's fight until the 2 minute and 34 second mark when Franklin initiated one of the greatest knockouts in MMA history. After backing Quarry up with a solid right jab, Franklin floored the challenger with a straight left down the pipe. Quarry went limp on his way down to the ground and landed stiffened up, with his jaw clenched and his fist in the air in a gruesome state of unconscious seizure. Nate stayed down for some time after the bout had been called. Number 8 Jin Yu Frey First, there was a pretty big kick to the head and then she followed up with two big hooks that knocked Harris to the ground. Regardless, the scariest part was watching Darla's body drop like a ragdoll the way it did. The kick disoriented but that punch pushed the off button on Harris. Even Frey herself seemed to be concerned for her opponent's health after seeing her body become so lifeless. Number 7 Francis Ngannou Please listen to the sound of these punches. That leg kick is there for Biggie Boy. Oh! Oh! It's all Rosen Strike is out! And Ganu! Out cold! Bad. Out cold. Jarzinho Rosen Strike spent longer in recovery, awkwardly propped up against the octagon fence after being terrifyingly knocked out by Francis and Ganu than he did in the actual fight itself. The fight only lasted 20 seconds, and that included the amount of time Rosenstruck was knocked out on his feet by a thudding Ngannou left hand before the Cameroon big man attacked his opponent with six follow-ups. Number 6 Rashad Evans Chuck Liddell was looking to get back into title contention against Rashad Evans at UFC 88. Instead, he became the recipient of a legendary knockout loss as midway through the second round, Evans threw a devastatingly power overhand that rattled his brain so hard that he instantly collapsed face down on the canvas unconscious. It was the first time that the Iceman had been completely knocked out cold in his career, but instinctively, Number 5 Tank Abbott Most people believe that Steve Nelmark died during this knockout. Fortunately, that was not the case. Not content to just have one of the most jaw-droppingly brutal knockouts in UFC history, Tank Abbott did it again a year later at Ultimate Ultimate 96 against Steve Nelmark. This time around, it looked like Abbott had just killed his opponent with a single punch when he landed a thunderous right hook and Nelmark ragged all to the ground with his legs tucked underneath him and his head leaning off to the side at an alarming angle against the cage. Number 4 Brad Kohler Kohler does have great speed, good lateral movement. Oh, oh. Just 30 seconds into this fight with Steve Judson at UFC 22, Brad Kohler handed Steve Judson one of the most devastating right hands in the history of the sport. Built like a breeze block, Kohler's blow was so powerful that it knocked the debuting Judson out instantly, resulting in almost slow motion head first fall onto the canvas. The fighter would remain unconscious long enough that medics gave him oxygen in the octagon and then quickly ferried him off to the hospital. Number 3 Travis Fulton
after Bullock came out of the traps running with a flying switch kick, Fulton manhandled the smaller man, taking just 44 seconds to win the fight. Bullock can be seen writhing in agony, immediately after the slam in credit to Fulton who knew immediately that the fight was over, choosing not to strike his grounded opponent. Fulton didn't celebrate the win either, instead of tending to Bullock who was in big trouble at that time. Number 2 Marlon Marais Aljo was literally dabbing while being deemed unconscious. Wow, and he Look separates. Back to the center they go. The stoppage came in a shocking and devastating manner. Sterling reached for a takedown and as he leaned forward, Marais landed a knee to the side of Sterling's head. The impact of the strike left Sterling limp. Before Sterling's face even hit the mat, Marais signaled that the fight was over. It was so bad that it was frozen stiff and had to be stretchered out of the octagon. Number 1 Raymond Daniels The power and effect was scary in itself. He's here right now fighting on the biggest stage probably his life for the career. Nice spinning body kick. As the first round of their fight on the main card at Bellator Birmingham was winding down, Daniels launched himself into the air spinning a full 360 degrees before landing, pausing and dropping Wilker Barrows with a clean knockout punch. One of the scarier parts of this knockout, other than the power, was watching Wilker Barros' body spasm uncontrollably. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we'll be covering terrifying knockouts that caused MMA fighters to have seizures. Also, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. When an MMA fighter gets hit with something with a lot of power, they either get knocked out, knocked down, or insanely disoriented, unless you're Khabib. But only a handful of times have we seen MMA fighters get hit with something absolutely deadly to where it's caused them to twitch or even have seizures. For this video, we have compiled the list of instances where MMA fighters got knocked out, causing them to start twitching or even worse. Before this video starts, we just want to thank every MMA fighter that decides to put the gloves on and step into the cage while putting their health on the line in order to entertain us. Number 11 Otman Azetar The Moroccan MMA fighter sent his opponent to another dimension, but with enough power for that his leg to start twitching while he was still out cold. And that's high tar. Oh! oh that's face it. first! Wow. Wow. Such wow. a huge right hand. This terrifying knockout had Timu Pakalan fall on the canvas face first as the referee swooped in to stop any damage from happening even though Otman clearly didn't want to hit his opponent. The blow landed right behind the ear and Pakalan was left twitching on the canvas after a downright scary finish. Number 10 Vince Reynolds In an MMA fight between amateur fighters Vince Reynolds and Zach Chagrud, an insane knockout instantly turned into a nightmare. This knockout only took 15 seconds as both fighters would start a little slugfest. Vince Reynolds would try to hop on his down fighter but the referee would intervene, thank god. The knockout had occurred causing Zack to be knocked out cold and his body stiff for about 15 seconds till his brain would start rebooting causing his whole body to have a very scary seizure. Number 9 Sammy Barrick 9 seconds was literally all it took. 9 freaking seconds. Big kick. Oh, oh my it's over. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is unbelievable. Paramedics are in. What's even worse is how the music is playing while Sammy's opponent was having a full out seizure on the ground. Classic trolling. After this insanely scary knockout would occur, no extra punches would land on Sammy's opponent Mark Smith, but the results of this powerful knockout would definitely be noticed. Number 8 Russian Fighters During this event, a fighter was hit with a spinning back kick to the head that separated him from his consciousness. However, instead of the regular bodily reaction, 
This fighter's body seized up violently for several minutes. The incident did not end there. The fighter was then moved to the corner like a sack of potatoes and was fanned with a towel until his body stopped shaking. Nobody even thought to call for help. <laughs> Genius. Number 7 Mohammed Wasim Kobandi. These elbows were just foul just cause Mohammed's opponent literally had no other way of defending himself other than using his face due to his very vulnerable position. <laughs> He was in a mount, then he got out of the mount, and then he went into God dang and went right into a This knockout was so freaking deadly it had Rohani on the ground, causing him to twitch in his legs. Thank God though that the fighter was able to wake up and leave the octagon on his own will. Rohani has not fought since then. Can you blame him? Number 6 Rafael Barbosa This case was caused by possibly some of the worst refing ever seen in MMA. Okay, maybe not the worst, but it's definitely up there. <laughs> Rafael Barbosa is the fighter that has Melchis Yel Costa in the choke, and he had the fighter out cold in the choke for a straight minute and a half. While in the choke, you can clearly tell that all the blood had stopped going to Costa's brain for a bit, causing him to spaz while still being held in tight. Number 5 Abdul Khalid Opponents Abdul Khalid and Ilner Sami Golan, where Abdul knocked Sami Golan out with a devastating overhand right. Whoa, very nice! That's brilliant! What a strike by Abdul Khalid Dabliata! Fantastic! The referee and the fighter saw that Ilner's leg were slightly twitching after he fell to the canvas. As the medical team and officials tended to Ilner, you can see the great amount of concern Abdul had for his opponent. After Ilner got back to his feet, Abdul showed a great sign of sportsmanship and lifted his opponent's hand in the air for the crowd. Number 4 Jake Rochal Ever seen a fighter choked unconscious to where his whole body started shaking afterwards? Well, you've seen some bad ones already, but here's another one. Chris Levin was defending well, then Rochal then passed the side control and grabbed the arm triangle. Levin tried to tap out, but then he passed out and finally the referee stopped Rochal. After both fighters would be separated, Chris Levin could be seen twitching aggressively as the referee was working to keep his arms and body as still as possible. Number 3 Jose Johnson The co-main event at Legacy Fight Night Alliance 78 on that Friday night between Jose Johnson and Rafael Costa ended with a devastating knockout. Oh, brother, is that over oh and God. out? This knockout was so hard to watch just because of how Rafael's body reacted. Johnson was defending against the Costa takedown attempt when he delivered a brutal elbow to the head for a knockout victory. Costa dropped to the canvas after taking the elbow to the side of his head. He landed face down and twitched briefly before lying motionless. This motion literally resembles that of a bobblehead having no control of its body at all. Number 2 Mario's Gela Now this one closely resembles an arm or leg lagging out in any EA game you have ever played and it literally happened 2 weeks ago. The Croatian fighter Mario's Gela literally ended the fight in 23 seconds when he was able to have Zarko up against the cage after he would be dropped by an overhand and followed up by a flurry of punches. The overhand would land and have Zarko sitting up eating bombs until one would land and have the fighter out cold with his legs shivering as if someone had turned the AC on or something. Number 1 Raymond Daniels After landing a spinning front kick that sent Barros back against the cage, Daniels looked to set up an unreal shot from close range. Raymond Daniels made a statement in his Bellator debut, finishing Wilco Barros at 4 minutes and 36 seconds of round 1. After this insane knockout would land on the face of the cornered Barros, he would be out cold but his whole body would still be twitching at the same time. The knockout was a complete beauty but the cherry on top was Barros' body reacting to it. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, feel free to let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. 
Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the greatest revenge moments in MMA. Also, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. We all love a good revenge story. Nothing feels better than watching a fighter get their own back against the opponent who bullied them. The internet is essentially made up of these kinds of videos. One simple search on YouTube for Bully Gets Own will literally bring thousands of results. MMA fighters have the opportunity to face the people that have antagonized them in the past. For this video, we have compiled a list of instances where MMA fighters got revenge on their opponents by avenging a loss or displaying an excellent example of karma. Number 12, Anzor Ajiev. Bakosevich talked a little trash leading up to the fight and was often a little abrasive. He played the video showing himself and his team flipping off Ajiev at the way and he tried to intimidate Ajiev, which resulted in Ajiev shoving him. And at KSW 33, the most satisfying back beatdown occurred. Placing all the way across. Oh, he's looking for a choke, Will. This might be it. He's going to go out in a minute. That looks really deep. There's the top. It's a top up. Ajiev controlled the fight throughout the match. By the third round, he forced a submission for the victory, and Ansor got Bakosevich a taste of his own medicine after the fight by making him tap out. Number 11, Javid Basharat. Calling another fighter names is normal in the game, unless you call them a terrorist. <laughs> MMA fighter Javid Basharat choked Oren Callen, the opponent who called him a terrorist just the day before the bout. In a win that impressed UFC boss Dana White so much, he handed the Afghan athlete a contract. Bashrat appeared calm despite the slur, which happened during the weigh-in ceremony ahead of their bantamweight match under the Contender Series promotional banner in Las Vegas. Number 10, Brock Lesnar. Despite dominating the opening moments of that 81 bout, Lesnar was caught with a knee bar and forced to tap out. Before and after this fight, Mir had mocked Brock's professional wrestling background. For MMA, Frank Mir, you're mine. Let's go! You can see that Lesnar was seething at all of this and wanted nothing more than to pummel Mir's face in. That's it. Try to finish it. That's it. Hope it is there. And it is all over. He's out. Brock Lesnar. And that's exactly what he did upon the two stepping into the octagon once more. In that second fight, Brock got the second round TKO victory and then proceeded to angrily get in Mir's face as Lesnar celebrated his bloody revenge. Maybe this was also because he said he wanted to kill Brock. Number 9, Tony Johnson. Russian MMA star Mohamed Fakhaev attacked ACA heavyweight champion Tony Johnson in a pre-fight interview. The Chechen athlete decided on a scuffle after the words of his opponent, but the fight was stopped by the representatives of the fighter. But the pre-fight brawl would be the exact opposite as Tony landed a happy meal right at the edge of Mohamed's pie hole. <laughs> A few seconds of ground and pound and the fight would be over as soon as the Russian fighter would be borderline put into a coma. Number 8 Rampage Jackson The ominously named Axe Murderer destroyed Jackson in their previous two Pride fights, most famously brutally finishing his opponent at 2004's Pride 28 show with a vicious knee after vicious knee. Four years later, Rampage would finally get some semblance of revenge on Silva when the pair met for the third time at UFC 92. Rampage with a quick jab. Just three minutes into the first round of that contest, Quentin Jackson would get his long sought W over Vanderlei Silva, and what a win it was with a left hook leaving Silva out cold on the canvas. Number 7 Mansoor Barnawi This fight headlined at Road FC 52 on Jeju Island. After this ignorant face off, you want Mansoor to win. And Quan A. Sol came out with a very confusing game plan of rushing in and trying to fight Barnawi in the clinch. Follows in the pocket of Mansoor Barnawi. It's going in deeper. Mansoor is just taking his time. Look at that. Oh, so oh, there it is. While trying to scramble out against the fence, Quan had his back taken and got himself into the most dangerous position he could be in. Quan defended as long as he could, but there was no shaking off the ground specialist. Once the arm was finally sunk into the neck region and the hips are fully outstretched, Quan had the option to either tap or nap. Number 6, Mirko Krokop. 
Just 15 years ago, the Brazilian shocked the world by beating the master at his own game. Gonzaga scored a brutal head kick KO against the Croatian, who had become famous for the head-seeking missiles attached to the bottom of his legs. It looked like Gonzaga was going to get another victory over Krokop in the main event of UFC Krakow as he dominated him for the first two rounds. However, the course of the fight changed in the third stanza when Krokop rocked his opponent with sharp elbows during a clinch at the fence. Krokop then finished the fight by unleashing some devastating ground and pound until the referee had seen enough and awarded him the TKO victory. Number 5 Rose Nama Yunus it's fair to say that the whole MMA world was hoping that Rose Nama Yunus got revenge on Joanna Jacek. You know what? You are not stronger mentally. You are mentally unstable and you are broken already and I will break you in the fight. Of course, Jacek had always been one to try and stir the pot with controversial comments designed to get into the head of her opponent. It's Jacek. Well, Rose... Oh! Thankfully, that UFC 217 contest saw that ridiculously calm Rose get the first round TKO win, take Joanna's title belt, and bring the Polish fighter's perfect MMA record to a crashing halt. Number 4 Yerkabul and Taktar Kazakh MMA fighter Yerkabul and Taktar fought Abdul Aziz Satbul Diev before their fight at the Octagon 27 tournament. These guys already fought though. Three months before, Taktar lost to a choke. During the duel, Yerkabulin's views were pushed by his rival from Uzbekistan. In response, the Kazakhstani kicked the opponent, after which a fight broke out between them. But Taktar would get the last laugh as he would start the fight with a flying knee and then eventually hit his opponent so hard to where his mouthpiece would get sent to orbit. Number 3 George St. Pierre Towards the end of the round, Hughes was on top of St. Pierre. As GSP went for a Kimura, Hughes countered by spinning around and going for an armbar, which he secured at 4 minutes and 59 seconds of round 1. Then at UFC 65, St. Pierre once again challenged for the welterweight title, but it would go a little differently this time. In the second round, St. Pierre hit Hughes with a head kick that dropped him. He finished up with a few punches and the fight was over at 1 minute and 25 seconds of round 2, and St. Pierre was the welterweight champion. Number 2, Habib Habib Nurmagomedov. Habib Nurmagomedov got the best sort of revenge on Conor McGregor. He beat the absolute shit out of the Notorious at UFC 229. From trash talking, the ante was upped when Conor and his group of pals attacked a bus carrying Khabib at UFC 223, smashing one of the windows and causing injuries to several of those inside. The Irishman mocked Nurmagomedov, his family, his faith, and anything that Conor could use to try and get under the skin of his opponent. I'm gonna go like yeah, my last bus. fight. Happy birthday, like, the bus. I, I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I don't drink. Why don't you drink? For Khabib, revenge came as he tapped out Conor McGregor in the fourth round of their Las Vegas battle. Even then, animosity was so bad that the pair and their teams embarked on a post-fight brawl that saw both fighters suspended. Number 1 Michael Bisping for Dan Henderson, his sweet revenge was landing one of the greatest shots in UFC history to claim a KO victory over his trash-talking rival Michael Bisping. But not just your standard KO win, this was one of those rare shots that leaves an opponent in a twitching, cold-cocked heap on the mat. Of course, the count would eventually avenge this loss a little down the line when Bisping successfully retained his UFC middleweight championship against Hendo at UFC 204. The contest ended in a unanimous decision victory for Bisping and what proved to be the final fight of Henderson's legendary career. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next.